All right, guys, and now I want to tell you about the two fundamental rules of chess. And they're both tools that you can use uh, to help you think in your thought process when you're playing and deciding all your moves. So the first rule is that if you're not sure of what to do, take your worst piece and make it better. Many famous players um, talked about this rule in their books. Uh, for example, Dvoretsky mentioned it a lot of times as a famous chess coach. And here I have an example that'll demonstrate this rule. But apart from uh, this rule, what is the second fundamental rule of chess? And it's actually to do with what you're thinking about. So the rule says that we are not allowed to play a move until we know the point of our opponent's last move. So imagine this position for black. And white's last move was something like rook h to e1, right? The first thing black should ask himself is not, hmm, how can I checkmate this king right now? How can I sacrifice something on d4? And not how can I take this pawn for free? No, it should be, why would he do that? And what's he planning next? And then the second question he should ask himself, and this goes from the first rule of chess, is what's my worst piece and how can I make it better? Now, if you have a clear plan like, okay, I want to set up a battery somehow with my queen that's going to come to e4 and I'm going to checkmate him on c2, although that's impossible because the bishop's protecting it. Or if you have some very clear plan, like I'm going to attack this pawn on um, d4 by somehow getting the queen to b6 and then pressuring it so many times with all my pieces that I'm going to win this pawn. That's an example of a clear plan. And that's good. And if you have that, go ahead and do it in uh, whatever way suits you. But if you're not sure about a plan, like for example, right now, white has no clear weaknesses. Like this is protected. This is protected. This is more or less protected. The king is more or less protected. All of white's pieces are playing. So it's not easy to decide who you're hunting right now, right? And if you're not sure about who you're hunting, then we think about how to improve our pieces. So we take a worse piece and improve it, make it better. If you look at this position for black, right? Uh, let's look at all the pieces. This one is working. This one's working. It's a, actually a good bishop. Uh, this knight is working. It's attacking the pawn. It's defending the king, the chimney knight. Uh, the queen is doing her job, uh, helping all the pieces along. And the rook is defending the pawn and the king. Uh, this guy's not working. And we'll talk about him. And also, I'm going to uh, tell you guys about this knight. Because it's not enough just to be awake, not to be a sleeping beauty. You also have to do a job. And this knight right now, it protects the pawn that's already protected. <laughs> it protects a knight and protects this guy, but the knight is also uh, protected by the queen and the pawn. So we don't have to worry about that. And, and the bishop is already protected by the pawn and nobody's really attacking it at the moment. So the knight is just a target for the white pieces when they will open up the e-file. Uh, so when we talk about which piece to improve, the rook or the knight, uh, you can improve both. So you can start off with the rook and then you can improve the knight but right now it, this is actually my game and i was thinking um if i improve the rook am i not pitting the knight to the rook am i not being mean to this knight right and if i play something like b5 well my king is a bit open maybe it's a decent idea but i'm a bit scared to open up my roof like that so maybe keep that for later on when i have more pieces around uh, the um, black king side, so basically the queen side, if you look at uh, this part of the board as the queen side, because this is still the queen side of the board. Um, so then you start thinking, maybe instead of putting the rook here so it gets pinned by the bishop right away, maybe I can improve the knight first, kick away that bishop, and then bring in the rook on the open file, uh, because the knight will be gone from e7. So then you start thinking, how can I improve the knight? We can try to move the bishop back, but then the bishop is not much better. So we just made one piece worse and then made one piece better. That's not the kind of deal I want to make. I'd rather keep my amazing bishop here and put a knight on a more productive outpost, right? So then you start thinking to yourself, where on the board, anywhere, if I could put it anywhere realistically, that's, uh, you know, safe where would i put it and if you look at all the squares 
you think e4 maybe i can get a knight to e4 that would be great but then this pawn could always kick me away and the actual best square for this black knight that he can realistically get to and it's a safe square is actually c4 i always tell my students to actually pick up the knight and put it anywhere they want and when they know that's the square they want to put the knight on then they find a way to get the knight there can you guys try i'll give you five seconds to and you can pause the video if you like to find a way to get the knight from e7 to c4 and the answer is first you move the king to b8 then you bring the knight to c8 then b6 attacking the bishop so the bishop goes away and when you're ready you can bring uh, either knight to c4 where it's gonna get closer to the king side so we can start attacking this king and creating mating patterns and a mating attack against the king so that's what i tried to do so the black king went to b8 and now this knight is coming to c8 uh next move now of course white understands that and white says okay i know what you did there i follow the second rule second fundamental rule of chess i figure out what you're trying to do and now i'm gonna stop you so then the black knight came to c8 and the white queen came here and said, hey, go ahead, go play here. But then you ask yourself that question again about rule number two. What's he planning? Why would he put a queen there? Oh, he's staring at my knight. That's the blunder check, right? And two things are staring at my knight. I wonder what he's going to do. So then you calculate. I play knight to b6. They take me. I take with queen. They take my queen. I take with pawn. I have a horrible pawn structure. All my pawns are very bad if they're going to be on d5, uh, c6, c7, and a6. Those are bad pawns, doubled and backwards um, doubled pawns. And this guy is just isolated. And so then the knight can come here. That's going to be really ugly for black. So instead, I said, no, thank you. Let's kick away your bishop first because now I have enough pieces to defend my king. And when the bishop goes away, excellent. Now I can put the knight here and everything is safe. Uh, so now white said knight to h4. I'm going to attack your knight. Uh, I'm going to attack your bishop with my knights. And so if black is a good player, he can either return the bishop back home, which is a great move. Or uh, black can defend the bishop with the knight. So if this knight goes here, then this knight is going to come back, uh, re uh, capture back and attack these important points um, and maybe just maybe this knight can also take the same path this time through uh, d6 and end up on either c4 or e4 which are excellent squares for the knight anytime you have central pawns in the middle uh, and only one pair of central pawns the squares behind uh, beside the central pawns are very important so white will try to get this square and this square black will try to get this square and this square that tends to be the case. Those are the great outposts for the knight. And now what happened next is white said, hmm, how can I bring the bishop to a four and maybe my knight will come here. So white played knight f to g2. Maybe this knight can be replaced with this one, if anything, but uh, it's not going to be so easy to do. Uh, and now black just says, what's my worst piece? Let's take my worst piece and make it better but first i'm gonna save my bishop because i don't want this guy taking my bishop anymore i'd rather keep it on the board white says let me kick away that queen i say no problem and now white says a rook to e3 black says okay what's my worst piece now it's the rook now i should bring in my rook so everyone is uh, in the party everyone's having fun and i'm not missing any forces i didn't lose the peace race and after white played knight to e1 we should ask ourselves that question again why would anybody play such a strange move knight on the back rank what's up with that okay and then if you think about all the things that move does you'll learn a lot first of all when white played rook d3 rook e3 you should ask yourself what are all the things that move does not just one like not uh putting a rook on the file so its friend can join it. That's not a, the whole purpose of the move. There are other reasons that you have to figure out. So one of the reasons is that now the knight can come here and then he can, can come to either d3 or um, maybe f3 and e5, but probably 
d3 because from d3 you can go to e5 and c5 which is an amazing square for that knight using the whole the swiss cheese around my own king and there are not many pieces that can stop him if he comes here so black should take his time or her time and figure out a great way to stop this knight from coming here a lot of kids would just play something like i don't know um knight to f5 or you know uh, king b7 trying to get rid of the pin because that's black's plan but we should focus on our opponent's plan more than our plan and his plan is knight d3 so we should stop it and i'll give you guys five seconds to find a way how to stop knight to d3 and the answer is knight to c6 the second knight c6 is played it's so much harder to play knight d3 because this fork will be hanging on d4 see so we stopped him from playing knight d3 because if he dares play that i say thank you very much i'm protected by my knights and now i'll get the queen or the rook you choose either way you're losing something so we stop his threat his positional threat and now the knight can come to c4 slowly but surely we can improve our position make our worst pieces better maybe a next move i'll put the king here just to make my worst piece the king better right so remember those two rules number one take your worst piece and make it better if there is no clear plan and number two you're not allowed to play a move unless you're sure about what the opponent's gonna do or you think you know what the opponent's gonna do if you think the opponent uh, move, so he played a move that doesn't do anything, that's fine. At least you have an idea about what he's trying to do. And, you know, if he has no point behind his move, like if 91 was just to waste time and just to go back, even better for you because you're not losing out on anything, right? At least this way you guessed at his idea, which is very important.